Currently, uh, we have a number of individuals coming from Southern Ontario. It's mostly involved with the drug trade. They will come in town, they will take advantage of some of our vulnerable population, get themselves set up so they can sell drugs in our community, uh, which is having an absolutely huge impact. Kids coming in from up north or coming in from Indigenous communities, these are vulnerable youth that we focus on because their risk factors are a lot higher uh, because of uh, where they're coming from. The impact is stemming from residential schools. You know, even for myself coming here from uh, Elsie Bookdug, New Brunswick, um, in a First Nations community coming here, I struggled a lot with myself being an Indigenous person in Thunder Bay. Well, I couldn't imagine living up, up north in an isolated community and coming here with little to no experience of city life. When young people come here, they're trying to figure out where they fit in our city. They're trying to make new friends. They're trying to uh, navigate uh, the different systems we have in a city as opposed to their life at home. It can at times put them in vulnerable situations. Some of those things you, you have to acknowledge as, you know, as a police service that there's a lot of things that are not in, in the Indigenous youth's favour when it comes to being prepared for city life. We know from our history that, that we have had some um, tragedies and we want to make sure that we keep these youth safe. We want to make sure that they're aware of the things that are different here in a bigger city as a, uh, opposed to their home community and just places where they can go to get supports if they are having some issues and knowing that there are a lot of people here willing to help them on their road to success in their education. In the past, police usually go in with a very traditional, uh, we're going to give you a PowerPoint presentation and we're going to talk to you about all the things you should not do. Officers come in to a school, do a presentation. Hey, don't do drugs. This is why they're bad. When we were taking a look at how we wanted this project to unfold, we tried to take a different approach and go where the kids are at and meet them on the mediums of which we think that they are going to listen. I had the opportunity a number of years ago to hear Wally Shaw speak. I found that his delivery of his message is very impactful and really resonates with everyone in the room on a different level and actually really uh, helped to promote engagement. Your life is worth trying to get he together took on a number of work, writing workshops in various schools and education centers. It was amazing to see that, you know, when he first gets up there, the kids aren't really paying attention, they're looking at their phones. And then as soon as he starts talking and engaging and the kids can start to relate to what he's saying, you can see their heads come up, you can see them lean in, you can see them actually taking in the words that he's saying. What I witnessed and experienced there with Wally and, and the students at DFC, it was, it was amazing because within seconds uh, after Wally was speaking, it was, it was just, they were listening, they were connecting. I enjoyed hearing him talk. I could literally hear him talk all day if I wanted to. I immediately started writing after his speech. I mean, before I didn't feel like writing, but he inspired me. I do think it's a positive thing because Wally seems to have a way of connecting with the youth and making them feel comfortable to open up but also to explore some topics that perhaps they need to think about that are affecting youth today. And he delivers it in a way that is creative and fun and engaging so they're more willing to listen to the message. Wally was having the youth just dive into their own emotions and how they were feeling and what they experienced in their own lives. They were able to become vulnerable and express themselves through poetry. Through that medium, he was able to uh, engage the youth in some dialogue. Um, he was able to 
get them to actually sit down and do a writing and share. And I think the sharing piece was the most amazing part of it because I really didn't know how much the young people would share, how vulnerable they were willing to be with their classmates. And it was outstanding to see what they shared, but even more outstanding to see how the students supported each other in what they had to say. I know it motivated me a little bit even just to go out there and do what you want to do. I could use that. I can make sure my classmates are just being themselves, being the best people they can be. It really piqued their interest. I think 95% of them participated in that, maybe even 100% most interesting thing is when our time was up in the class, after the hour was over, most kids can't wait to just get out the door and get on with life, but they actually stayed to actually have further conversation and further connection. So I think that um, the avenue that we used for this project really opened up ears. Number one, it opened up minds, they can open up hearts, and uh, I think it's just one of those things things that I think uh, can be built upon for uh, building resilience in young people. The individuals with lived experience who have volunteered to work with us on this project are basically the foundation for how this whole project rolled out. Having Kyle and Jessica tell their story is letting the kids know that it's, it's okay to be vulnerable. When these two individuals chose to work with us, chose to be vulnerable, chose to give us their story, chose to come on tape with us so that they could be part of educating young people, it really started this real natural flow of where this project was gonna go to. Something that I've learned in the last few years of you know my life uh, that I can bring here to Thunder Bay Police as well is it's, it's okay to be vulnerable. And when you become vulnerable, the people that you want to help will also become vulnerable and take your help and your assistance. You know, I think a lot of times people talk on things because you've read them or you've seen a show about them and you think you know a little bit about it. But I think until you have those people with real lived experience talking from how they got in, what the appeal was, what the life was like, and how darn hard it was to get out. Um, you really can't feel or fully understand what the whole cycle of being involved in a gang is about. Without them, we wouldn't be where we are today because we would just be saying words. I think their words, their life, brought this whole project to life. It helped direct it, whether it be in the poem, whether it be in the video, um, and then I think Wally, using him as the medium to get the message across, allowed us to reach the students, and again, in turn, allowed the students to work with us to share, so that we as police officers have a better understanding of where they're coming from. For some of them, uh, what they shared are situations which I would never know that they have encountered at their young age. So it makes me more um, empathetic, more compassionate, and I think will just help me do my job better in the long run. But uh, we're hoping through this project um, that these people who have nothing to gain but to tell their story really sets the tone, sets the pace, and uh, is, is going to make it probably resonate more with young people. For Thunder Bay Police to do a type of um, workshop like that to reach the young people, in my opinion, is probably one of the best um, things that we've done um, in several years that, that I've been on. So um, for that, I'm very, uh, you know, was very excited about that. It sort of grew from nothing to where it is today. And I think that uh, I'm very proud of every single person involved in this because I think everybody offered what they could. And at the end of the day, uh, it's gonna serve these young people well.